Yo, I'm here installing, and it's absolutely boiling. I'm installing um, a load of trunking, um, data trunking, 100 by 50 trunking, and a load of sockets for uh, an office complex. Um, I've got to fit Memshield 2 pod. I'll talk more about these later. Uh, these are fantastic. I've been using them for years, and I know I, I hate people using the term game changer, but this actually was. Uh, I've got some fire clips, uh, some of these safety line fire clips inside the trunking. Now, a little bit of common sense has to be applied here because this is only a meter from the floor, okay? I know the regs and on-site guide, they both say about the distance of fixings or the spacings of fixings. Well, and there's a different measurement for when it's horizontal or vertical and conduit and trunking. However, it's all, always been a gray area, even, especially even when the regs changed and it, and it made us use these um, kinds of supports about the distance between them. Do we do them every fixing? Do we do them every other one? I remember different sparks doing different things. For me, in this instance, I've just done two. I still think it's pointless doing two because it's a meter off the ground and it's not on a fire escape or anything like that. But I feel I just can't not do them. Uh, I've fitted some trunk in and conduit. So behind me, as you can see, I always fit these safety line conduit saddles. I think they look so much nicer. And safety D line, if you're watching, whatever you've done to the new these new saddles, the coating is fantastic. I know it sounds sad to get excited over the coating, but it is so much nicer. It feels and looks nicer than the original versions that you brought out. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Um, I've got a length of conduit coming down, terminated into the 100 by 50 trunk and going all the way along. I've just second fixed all the sockets. I've had this for years, the original Bosch Go, um, which is, I only ever used it when I was working on dado trunking. Um, Cause I just, I'd rather the feel of your fingers I'd rather feel the thread, especially on a gal box, so I'd only ever use it on trunking. Um, I've got to fit some, like I said, I've got to fit this RCBO pod. Um, I'll talk more about that. Well, this is on a first floor, and I am aware that some sparks, they, when they work on circuits or alter the circuits or make additions to circuits, because it's not on the ground floor, they think, man, it doesn't need RC protection. In my, in my opinion, it does. But there's some people who go, oh, it's first floor, second floor. No, it doesn't need IC protection. I disagree. It, it requires additional protection, which is why, even though it's first floor in an office, I'm fitting RCD protection. I'm going to, uh, to feed this circuit. It's a ring circuit in this office. I think it does a couple of offices. So what I'm going to do is break into the ring here, split the ring here. I'm going to pull one leg back up the trunk in, do a join here, and I've extended the ring round down the conduit and safety line saddles, nice and neat and tidy. And then into here all the way along. And then the other leg of the ring is gonna come back and it's gonna go onto there. And then I'll show you and talk through the RCBO. I absolutely love them. The Memshield 2 pods are fantastic. You do get bent over at the wholesalers when you order them. They are over a hundred quid each, but um, they are fantastic. But I'll talk to them in a bit. <clears throat> So this is the pod, right? Memshield 2 board. The pod, the job I was in, um, it was all like Bill and MEM1 stuff. And over a period of 12 years, I was replacing all the boards. And at the time it was Memshield 2. So I was fitting hundreds of these pods. Um, and normally what comes in the box is, don't want to drop it. So you'll get a longer dim rail uh, connection or clamp lever, and then this little um, plate that goes on the top once you take the MCB off. That's the uh, that's the pod. Testing the, the Memshield 2 pods. You can't RCD test these pods at the terminals. Little known fact. You have to do it on the on the load out on the field. And the reason is for that is that the terminals, like the line terminal is really far back. So due to the pod arrangement, you actually have to, it's past, it's um, pre the clamp, the CT clamp or the CT terminal, you know, the, the thing that measures the, the imbalance between the terminals. 
So that's why you can't do it at the terminals. So you have to do it at the load. So a lot of people I've had people have had questions or other sparkies have said to me when they fitted them and gone, oh, I couldn't get a reading uh, at the terminals. And that's the reason you can't do it because the clamp or the, or the um, you know, the CT, whatever you call it, the thing that measures the imbalance, it's really far back due to the pod arrangement. So cream reference lead and then neutral fly lead. What you do is you need to use a little flat driver. What? Such a clever design. Like, like I said, I fitted loads of these, and and um, Memshield Three came out in two thousand. Take that out. Came out in two thousand and nine. Memshield Three, and I was at the time I didn't use Memshield Three straight away. We're still on, we're still using Memshield Two at the job I was at, but in then yeah, two thousand and nine was Memshield Three, and they came out with the like color-coded RCBOs so they, I think it was like green was 6 amp blue was 16 like purple was 32 but I carried on fitting loads of these there we go take this off right. there we go down that way so take that off and then you've got a new one which slides in but it's a longer one so it goes up behind the pod and then you get the pod like that, and then clips into the top, like so, and then that little thing there sticks on the front, like so, and clamp down when you're ready. Yeah, that's right. And that goes in the bottom there like that. So and that's how you convert the MCB, which, like I said, I hate people saying that using the term game changer. But at the time, like this was back in 2006, 2007, like all I was smashing in was MM Shield 2 boards with the RCBO pods because it was all I was doing loads of office refurbishments. And I fitted hundreds of these pods. And now they're really expensive. Now they've obviously been superseded by MEM Shield 3 and stuff. But, um, yeah, I'm doing this here before I put it in because it's uh, a pain sometimes to um, with all the other cables in the board. There we go. Right in. Right. Right. Need to cover back on. Now we'll give it a test. Right, my colleague's just gone to re-energize re the circuit. You saw me just fit the pod. So I put the pod in, cover back on. He's now at the board. Obviously, like I told you in the video, you've got to do it from um, the load. So I'm just going to do a quick uh, loop test, and then I'm going to do an RCD test, and we'll see what we get. So that's our ZS. I'm going to go around and do an auto test. And all of the um, membership stuff has always been type A, as long as I can remember. So it's since at least 2006, all the RSPOs have always been type A. But I'm going to te test it on the type AC side of it. There you go. Looking good. I was concerned. I was worried because the circuit hasn't got RSD protection on it that there might be an issue. But generally, Commercial stuff isn't messed about with so much like it is in domestic, so. Right. Cool. Fantastic.